We are in Revelation. We are in Revelation 3. The session title, Living in Laodicea, Living in the USA. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Yeah, that's good. And we're starting with verse 14. But before we get to that, let's look at the points in the session in a sentence. Jesus calls his people to recognize their sin, repent of their sin, and remember what he has in store for those who persevere to the end. And the points are, Jesus calls his people to recognize their sin, Revelation 3, 14 through 18. Point two, Jesus calls his people to repent of their sin, Revelation 3, 19 and 20. Jesus calls his people to remember what awaits the faithful, Revelation 3, 21 through 22. By the way, those, those break, the breakdown of those verses is not the same as in your book if you're looking at it. Um, I just think it makes more sense this way. Um, we talked about how Paul, I mean, Paul, <laughs> how John is writing these, uh, writing all of this down, including these letters from Jesus to the churches in Asia. Okay. That area basically that you see there included in the box is the area that's known as Asia in biblical times. Okay. So, Western part of Turkey. And there are the churches, and there's the island of Patmos on which. Paul, on which John was exiled. (laughs) I'm going to get it straight. I'm going to get it straight. And so very quickly, I want you to know that the seven churches, each one of them got a letter. Each one of them got a letter. Ephesus over there is in verses one through seven of chapter two, Revelation two. They had on all of these had good news and bad news. Sort of. You are gung holier than thou. <laughs> it meant, and, and, and the words to that to the church at Ephesus was, man, you're, you're blowing and going. You're making things happen, baby. I mean, wow, wow. The problem is you've forgotten your first love. In other words, you've gotten so excited about the process that you forgot about me. Uh-huh. That happens, doesn't it? That happens to a lot of churches. Okay, the second one was Smyrna. And to Smyrna, the good news, you have endured persecution. And he goes on and on about how they've endured persecution. The bad news is it's going to get worse. (laughs) Yeah, well, thanks a lot. (laughs) Okay. Pergamum, the good news is you have remained faithful. The bad news is you've got some people in there that you're starting to pay attention to that really don't don't have it together. They are teaching you things that are not in line with what Jesus taught us. And you need to, you need to get that straight. Okay. Next, Thyatira. In Thyatira, the good news, you just keep getting better and better. The bad news is that slut Jezebel. We don't know exactly who or what she was, but we know that it was not pretty. And apparently this church had been led astray by this lady. And apparently they were doing all kinds of naughty and nasty things. You understand? When I say slut Jezebel, I really mean slut Jezebel. Okay, I know that ain't probably nice to say in church, but that's what she was. It's true. It's true. So anyway, but they were still doing good things. But they allowed her to to have control in so many areas. Okay, how about Sardis? You look alive, but you're dead. You look good on the outside. People come to your church and they think, Yeah, there's some Christians there, but the fact is you did. You're not doing anything. You're just laying there like a dead person. You ain't doing nothing. Now, we come to Philadelphia. Interesting thing happens. Philadelphia, you have followed and honored me. That's the good news. The bad news? Crickets. 
didn't have anything to say <laughs> about the bad news for the Philadelphians, except go Eagles. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to put that in there as a joke, but I don't mean it. <laughs> okay. And then we come to Laodicea, which is where we're going to be today. And in Laodicea, this is the, this is the crux of it right here. Good news, I got nothing. Said nothing good about the Laodiceans. He said nothing good about the Laodiceans. The bad news, he told him, you make me sick. You make me want to vomit. And he actually used those words. I mean, it's strong. It is very strong. And that's where we are today. I hate to tell you. Hope you got uh, your donut from outside. Hope you got it down first before we talk about people vomiting and all that kind of stuff. But we got we to gotta take care of it. So verses 14 through 18 go like this. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold, and I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. By the way, the NIV says spit you out. The real term is vomit. Okay, I'm about to vomit you out. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Okay. Now, before we discuss what he actually says, I want you to put yourself in the middle of that congregation. They're getting a letter from Jesus. Wouldn't you like to get a letter from Jesus? Wouldn't that be exciting? I want you to put yourself in their shoes. And they're getting this letter. And bear in mind that this whole thing is being read to them. Those six churches that came before, all had something good about them, right? Are you ready for something good to come your way from Jesus? You are, aren't you? I'm telling you. <laughs> you are psyched up and ready for this letter. Okay. So what did he actually tell them? What are some of the problems? They're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. You know, this is kind of interesting. I, I can't tell you the number of people who, who uh, preachers and, you know, people that I study and, and all that, who said something that I have not been able, and maybe I just went to the wrong sources, but I haven't been able to, um, what's the word for it? Um, confirm it, maybe. But the but what all kinds of people say is that they had Laodicea was a big city, big city, big city had big Colosseum kind of thing, you know, all this kind of stuff, chariot tracks, you know, you name it, big place. And apparently they got water from runoff from the snow and the mountains, which they were right next to. Okay. And you can imagine when that water comes down out of the mountains, that snow melt. You know what I'm talking about. It's not, it's chill. It's just chill. But by the time it would get to them, it wouldn't be quite so cold. And not only that, apparently they had some hot springs. Again, I haven't been able to confirm this and I wanted to, but it's just too good a story not to tell. <laughs> because so many people have told it. They had some hot springs right outside the city. And people would like to go out there. Well, they tried to get that water to come into the city and built aqueducts and all that kind of stuff to get that hot water into the city. Well, you know what happened by the time it got there? Yeah. Well, it wasn't cold. It was 
lukewarm. It was just tap water, right? Let's take curiosity. How many of you are coffee drinkers? You like to you like to drink coffee. You like to drink. I'm a coffee drinker. I'm a coffee drinker. Think about that time when you pick up that cup of coffee that's been sitting there a while, and it ain't hot no more. It just ain't the same, is it? It's just not the same. So, of course, that's why you keep it in one of those with the lid on top. That's right. Yes. Yes. It, not, not in the middle. Not in the middle. Cold, hot, either way, but not in the middle. Okay, so they're lukewarm. What else did he say about them? They're rich. Is America considered the richest nation in the world? Well, you'd have to throw out some places like um, Qatar and <laughs> some, some countries like that. But overall, overall, we are a rich nation. Okay, we are. There's, there's no denying that. When you look at per capita income around the world, we're at the top. Uh, we are a rich nation. What else does, and does he say you're bad? He just says you're rich. He says you're rich. But he's included it in a whole bunch of things that are bad. <laughs> right? What else does he say? Do what? Wretched. 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 That's kind of a strong word, isn't it? Yeah. By the way, the Greek word, can be translated into English, wretched. <laughs> Good to know, isn't it? Okay. What else does he say? You're bragging on your riches and claiming you don't need anybody else or need anything. Right? Yeah. I'm all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What else? Poor, pitiful, blind. Isn't it interesting that rich and poor are both included in the list? Wow. Think about that. Think about that. And pitiful. I said you think you're rich, but you don't realize that you're really poor. Right, 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 right. Okay. So pretty condemn, condemning, right? A lot of condemnation there. If you were sitting there like I asked you to, what are some of the things that uh, you might say in response to some of that? Would it be any of these statements? You're sitting there in church and you're saying, well, it may be true, but he doesn't have to be gross about it. Right? Isn't that one of the ways we deflect things? He didn't have to say it that way. He didn't have to be mean when he said it. Am I right? Every other church has problems too. Well, except the Philadelphians, you know. <laughs> but every other church, they had stuff wrong with them. Don't we like to do that? Don't we like to do that? Compare ourselves to other people instead of comparing ourselves to God and his holiness? He doesn't know what we're dealing with here. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Let me tell you. I have heard down through the years. And our staff people, I've never heard them say this. They may say it, but I've, I've never heard them say it. But staff people on churches love to say, well, our, our neighborhood's just declining. Our neighborhood. I, I went to a church. I went to a church in Dallas as minister of music and education. Okay. And that church at one time ran 2000 in Sunday school. Okay. When I went there, they were doing good to run 200. We had almost two city blocks of facilities, but running 200. And I'm, this is not on me, but when I went there, they said, our neighborhood is declining. 
our neighborhood is declining. The demographics were changing. And, th- and I said, look, you know, the neighborhood is changing. That means we need to reach the neighborhood. There's people right across the street from this church who don't know Jesus. We need to find them. We need to talk to them. We need to love them into the kingdom. And I'm glad to say when I left, we were way above that, almost double that, you know? So the church was coming alive and things were happening. But guys, do you understand? We can use any excuse in the book. It's just different here. Kids are different today. People are different today. People have a lot of things going on today. You just don't understand how it is. We say it. Moderation is the key. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to go overboard. You know, we don't want to be like those gung holier than thou Ephesians. We don't want to be like that. We're doing fine. We're really not that bad. And that's probably the worst one. We're doing okay. We're lukewarm. We're not hot. We're not cold. We're we're okay. We're right in the middle, baby. We're right in the middle. At least there's money in the bank. And I've heard that one too. I've heard that one in churches that I've served. Said, at least we're operating in the black. Well, good. Now let's spend that money for Jesus, man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, that was what they were most proud of, not the number of people that had come to know the Lord, but the fact that they were operating in the black. I'm sorry, I took a little too much time with that. But do you understand when I say we're living in Laodicea, we're living in the USA? Huh? Huh? Okay. We're talking about sin, and they, they thought their sin was just fine. They didn't want to deal with that. So fill in the blanks. We may refer to sin as a failure on the part of humans to live according to God's what? Uh, What's will? But we must recognize this failure is ours. Okay. We miss the mark when we deliberately choose to cast God's, cast aside God's intention for us. Okay, here we go. I said, here we go. I swear. According to God's standards, okay, which are wrapped up in his will. But, uh, and we must recognize this failure is, ooh, oh, didn't think of that one, did we? It is intentional. You think, no, man, I just messed up, man. I just messed up. No, let me tell you. Do what? <laughs> Yeah, in context, we should have gotten that one, right? Yeah. It's intentional. And the reason it's intentional is because we intentionally neglect the spiritual disciplines that would keep us in touch with the Lord. And when we do that, we end up sinning. When we ignore Bible study, when we ignore, and I'm talking about not here, when we ignore Bibles, personal Bible study, personal prayer, personal time alone with God, personal time in meditation in God's word, when we ignore those things, when we ignore the fellowship of the believers, when we ignore those things, we are not, we are not following God's standards. We are, would you reach up there and hit the on button with that thing? I'm getting hot. I don't care whether you feel like it or not. It's the big power. There you go. But you understand what I'm saying? That's when it happens. So what does Jesus do? He calls us to repent of our sins. And verses, well, I skipped it. It's not moving for me. Okay, verses 19 and 20. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Okay? So, Jesus calls his people to repent. Here's your positive. Thank you. Yeah. He doesn't leave them in the dark. 
He doesn't leave them and say, you've blown it. You disgust me. I can't stand the sight of you. You make me sick. But there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. He says he loves them. Yeah, he says he loves them. And how do we know he loves them? Because he's written them this letter. We know he loves them because he wrote them this letter. He's saying, I love you. And the way you know, I'm disciplining you. I'm correcting you. I'm challenging you. If, if God ain't challenging you, you know, you got to check it out. Say, why are you leaving me alone, God? Got to check it out because that's what love does. If you have kids, when your kids mess up, you don't say, oh, it's okay. Go on. No, you work with them. You talk with them. You apply whatever discipline you feel is appropriate for them, right? Whatever that is, whatever you feel is appropriate, but you do that and you do that not because you hate them, not because they disgust you, not because you can't stand the sight of them, although there's times, not because of any of that, but because you love them. So fill in some blanks. Repentance is a response to God's gracious call to salvation. It includes a, gen, a genuine what? Covering this up for y'all over here. Genuine disdain for one's sin, a turning away from one's sin toward. Wait a minute, I heard it. The Sunday school answer. Jesus and a life that reflects true. Yeah, I'll take true. Okay. Yeah. Sorrow. We want to ignore it. But we see sinful things and we want to ignore it. We see things on television that we really shouldn't be looking at in the first place. And instead of switching it off, we um, just kind of go wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, that's over now. So I can go on watching. You know Pam, please don't shoot me. I'm going to tell them something about you. Lord have mercy. Or at least let me know if I don't need to come home. <laughs> and now I'm forgetting the name. It wasn't General Hospital. I can't remember the name of the soap opera. There was a soap opera, One Life to Live. I don't know. No, see, none of those are ringing a bell. I mean, they all ring a bell, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Days Pam's of our lives. Used to listen to this soap on the radio. Are you with me? They listened to it. And then both of them, Mama and Papa both came in and sat down and watched this soap together. Well, you know what Pam's mom did? She picked up the habit too, right? So she started watching it. And you know what happened to Pam, right? Pam started watching the soap. But here's the thing. That soap opera became a connection between the generations that was really a lot of fun. Because Pam could talk with Papa about what so-and-so was doing, and he could say, ah, oh, I can't believe it. That's just disgusting, isn't it? Can you believe he did? You know, and just go, and they could go back and forth, and through the generations, through the generations, they could share this, right? Guiding light. Okay, guiding light. And so the bottom line is this. They went too far. They went too far. Pam shut it off and sent them a note telling you basically what I just told you. Not that that's going to change anything. You understand what I'm saying? But what it was, they went to uh, streaming instead of broadcast. 
And they realized in streaming, they can get away with a lot of stuff that you can't get away with on broadcast. And so she told them, nope, not going to happen. Not going to happen. I'm sorry. You crossed the line. And she told them, you know, about her grandparents. Guys, there's times when we just have to say no more. And it's time to leave, but we're not leaving yet. Just get your track shoes on to head into church. You understand? Jesus, call, Jesus calls his people to remember what awaits the faithful. Verses 21 and 22. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Could somebody look up 2 Peter 3, 9 quickly? Somebody got it? Got it. Joshua 24, 15. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Got it. 1 Kings 18, 20. Okay. How about 2 Peter 3, 9? What does it say? The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Joshua 24, 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Deuteronomy 30, 19. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now you choose life so that you and your children may live. First Kings eighteen twenty. Okay, well, actually, it happens right before that. Maybe I gave you the wrong verse. What happens is, I, Elijah, this is on Mount Carmel. Is it right before that when he says, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, he goes on to tell him this. He says, you people out there watching all of this, we got 400 prophets of Baal, and we got me. I serve God. They serve Baal. Today, you choose. You choose who you're going to follow, whether the almighty God or Baal. You choose. I don't know what verse it was. It wasn't, was it 21? Okay, so there you have it. Now, what do these verses say to the church at Laodicea? Decide. You're, you're faced with a choice. You have a choice. You have hope. But you have to decide. You have to turn. And we can ask the same thing of ourselves, can't we? We have to decide. We're living in Laodicea. We are living in Laodicea. And... You know, we can talk about how wonderful it is and what a nice new building we have and, and how nice everyone is to each other in here. We can talk about that all we want. But the bottom line is we might just be lukewarm. We might just be lukewarm as far as the world's concerned. And you know how we know that? Because ain't no one pitching a fit over what we do. Port Natchez Groves. Do y'all know who Port Natchez Groves is? They're the people that beat Brenham this year on the way to state. They're going to state this weekend, by the way. Okay. Do you know what their mascot is? They're the what? Indians. You can't say Indians. No, they're the Indians. Yeah. <laughs> Guys. Do you realize how much hot water they have had to endure because they dared to call themselves Indians? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. You understand? I'm not, I'm, this isn't a judgment call on my part. But people were outraged. I read some of the articles because I had to look up to see what their mascot was to ridicule a friend of mine from Port Nature's Grove. Anyway, I was shocked at some of the things 
that were coming out and article after article after article. All they did was name themselves Indians a hundred years ago when, you know, they and people rose up against them. Who's rising up against First Baptist Church of Brenham? I'm just asking, who is rising up against First Baptist Church of Brenham? It's time to choose. You're going to fish, you're going to cut bait. You're going to be a pretender or a contender. You're going to sit there or go there. Are you going to keep on living as a mealy mouth, wishy washy, namby pamby, lily livered, yellow belly, watered down Christian? Or are you going to live boldly for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? That's the decision that's set before you. It's time to decide. We need to get out of Laodicea as quick as we can. Father, thank you for your word that shows us what righteousness is and what righteousness is not. We thank you that in you we are declared righteous. But, Father, too often we don't live like it. We just kind of go with the flow. So, Father, help us. Help us to understand the magnitude of what you've done for us and to go boldly in your name and share our hope that we have in you with everyone we see. We don't want to be just lukewarm Christians, wishy-washy, mealy mouth. No. Set us on fire, Father, by your spirit within us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.